Hello there, my name is David Kidder. In this video, we're going to take a look at phasers and how they can be broken apart into horizontal and vertical components and basically how it is we can add them together. So in this example, we're just going to kind of keep things very basic. We'll leave the numbers out of it for now and just see what's going on as a concept. So what I have here is basically three phasers. Two of them we're going to pay attention to. That's V1 and V2. So I've got two voltages and I've got current as a reference. Where we would see this is in a series circuit. That's I, what I have drawn up here. So I've got an AC source and I've got my current and we know that current is constant in a series circuit. So we might as well use that as a reference because it's not going to change. What changes is the volt drops across each component. That's where we start to see differences in time. Now, what I have here is two different coils. Each have an inductive value and a resistive value, but for now, all we need to know is that the volt drop across each coil isn't going to happen at the same time. They're going to happen at different times. And it's all about the properties of those, something we'll get into later on. So all we really want to get from this is how can we take these phasers and break them apart and then add them together so that we have a V total. So we have our individual voltages um, and what I want to find is the voltage total in the circuit. So what I have to do is come back over here and have a good look at what each of my phasers is. So I'm going to take V1 here and I'm going to just move it over here. So there's my V1. Now this uh, is actually made up of two components, which is a horizontal and a vertical component. Okay, so what I've made essentially is a right angle triangle. My phaser is the hypotenuse, the longest side, and I've got my horizontal and my vertical component uh, that are going to make up the other uh, pieces. So this angle in here is the same angle that I have on my phaser to the reference. So everything kind of matches up. Um, why I'm doing this is I can't really just go ahead and add two phasers together um, based on their magnitude. Uh, so I have to actually add their values, their like values together. Kind of here's, here's what I sh I'll show you what I mean. So I've got my V and I've got it broken down into a triangle. And I can find those values knowing the angles and the side lengths. And I'm going to take my other V and I'm going to draw it over here. It's about something like that as a V2. And it has, of course, a horizontal and a vertical component as well. Now, if I were to try and add these two together, it would be very difficult. Have something like this. And I'd have something like this. So I'd kind of add my tip to tail. And I'd end up having to try and figure out what the length of those two phasers are and what the angle is. And it's kind of a very difficult task to do. But if I do dealing with just their horizontal and vertical components, it's actually quite easy for me to do. I'm going to add the horizontal because they're at zero degrees and I'm going to add the verticals because they're at 90 degrees. And all I got to do is add those components together. So if I take the horizontal here, I'll call that the H of V1, and I add it to the H of V2. So I'm going to take this value and place it in here. So I've taken those two horizontal components. I'm going to get the total phasor, um, the total resultant horizontal component. So I'll call that the H total. So what does that look like? It's going to be about this much plus this much. So it's this much plus this much. So I'm going to say, just guesstimate something like that. So that'll be our H total. Same thing for the vertical. What I want to do is Take this vertical, and I'll call that the vertical of voltage one. And then I'm going to take the vertical of this one, which is a much smaller one, and I'm going to add it into here. So that would be plus the vertical of voltage two gets me my voltage total on the, sorry, the vertical total. So once again, I'm going to add this onto here, and I add that on top of it, just kind of guesstimating. I'm going to say somewhere around there is going to be my vertical total. So just to kind of recap, I've taken the horizontal of this one and I've added it here, which means I've taken the horizontal of this and I've added it onto here. And I've taken the horizontal of this and I've added it onto there and I have my horizontal total for both of those phasers. And all I did was convert them into right angle triangles, solve for each side, and I get the numerical values and I can add them up. What I get at the end is the important part. I get 
the new hypotenuse. So if I know my length here, my know, I know my length here, I can find my, uh, what is actually gonna be the voltage total uh, made up of a horizontal and a vertical comp component, and I can find what my angle is. And when I go ahead and plot that, it's gonna be something like this, and this will be the V total of that system. So when I'm looking for V total, it's the value of both of those phasors put together and at what angle based off the reference. So you can kind of see it. If I had this phaser and I added this phaser onto it, it would get somewhere close to where I've drawn it and uh, get, get us our V total. So that's really what we're doing. We're adding the phasers together, but instead of trying to do this tip to tail method, we can just add their horizontals up, add their verticals together once we break them down into pieces, and then we can calculate for our new, our new hypotenuse, which is our V total, and find the angle with the trig functions that we have. Okay, so that's really the essence of it. We had our voltages of each component, we knew the total current, but we weren't quite sure what the voltage total was of the circuit, and that ends up being, just to kind of uh, bring it up, that is the E, the source voltage. All of the voltages in that system add up to the source, and that always remains true. We just have to do it with respect to their phaser. So yeah, I, I found, I had each individual voltage, I added them together with uh, my horizontal and vertical components, and it was actually quite easy to get the V total, okay? So that is the essence of adding phasers. Really straightforward uh, operation once you kind of know how to work a triangle, and then it's just simply adding it together. All right, so I hope you found this video in, uh, entertaining, if not educational, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.